In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to treat all different types of chicken parasites and stay till the end because you'll want to know some preventative measures you can take. Hi there, welcome to the Happy Chicken Coop YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me today. Please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also be sure to subscribe to our website, thehappychickencoop.com. If you subscribe using the link in the description, you'll receive a free ebook on the 10 best egg laying chicken breeds. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. Just a quick note, this is the first video of a two-part series on chicken parasites. I will focus today on external parasites and then later on in the second video I'll talk about internal parasites. Last month I did a video on how to keep your chickens safe from predators but using geese but sometimes the worst enemies are already living in the coop. Chickens are reluctant hosts to a number of parasites which can cause many problems from minor irritations such as a reduction in egg laying all the way through to in extreme cases death. Regular health checks for your flock will help detect problems early on before they cause a more severe problem. A health check can be as simple as checking through their feathers and inspecting the vent area and legs on a weekly basis. The old adage of an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure is quite true. Your birds may come to enjoy their weekly checks, especially if they get some treats afterward. So let's dive in here, shall we? Why don't we start off with the first one, mites. Mites are actually relatives of the spider. They have eight legs and are very small so sometimes they're difficult to spot there are three types of mites common to north america the northern fowl mite the chicken red mite the scaly leg mite all three types of mites can make a chicken miserable mites can cause anemia because they live off your chicken's blood if you notice your chickens over pruning pecking or losing feathers outside of their regular molting season you may have some external parasites on your hands another indication that your chickens have mites is the color of their combs and water waddles as well as the skin around their eyes. Typically this skin is bright red but if your chicken is anemic it will be pale in color. You can help your chickens get through a mite infestation by addressing the pests themselves and then providing high protein feed to your chickens as well as iron rich vegetation like spinach. Now let's talk about the northern fowl mite. Northern mite stays on the birds day and night so it's easier to spot and treat. You can often see clumps of their debris at the base of the chicken's feathers. The life cycle is less than one week contrary to most external parasites, infestations are generally worse in winter. To treat the northern mite, you need to dust all your chickens and the coop. Make sure you use a natural solution. Wood ash can work very well. Why not make your chickens a spa dust bath? This will help to treat your chickens. Now let's get into the chicken mite or the red mite. The red mite lives in cracks and crevices in the coop and is very difficult to eradicate. It comes out at night to feed on its reluctant host, the chicken. The red mite has a 10-day life cycle and are most active spring, summer, and fall. They can remain dormant for up to five months during the winter. A good way to spot if you have red mites is if your chicken are reluctant to go into the roost at night. The best way to eradicate the red mite is to rehouse your chickens and treat the coop. It's nearly impossible to remove red mites while your chickens are still living there and your birds need to stay in the new coop for about six weeks so that the old coop can be treated several times to effectively kill the mites. Just a quick note in a very severe infestation the only practical thing to do is burn and remove the old coop and let's get into the scaly leg mite this tiny critter burrows under the leg scales of the chickens and eats the skin leaving piles of debris behind the scales on the legs will start to lift up and become painful and uncomfortable for the bird if left untreated it can lead to lameness and eventually death fortunately this mite is relatively easy to get rid of first all you need to do is soak your chickens legs in warm water Water to soften the scales. Do not pull off the scales, but do gently remove any loose skin. Next, dry off their legs and apply olive oil or vegetable oil or something similar. You can do avocado oil as well, gently rubbing it in with a toothbrush and make sure it gets up and under the scales, then wipe off the excess oil and cover the legs with Vaseline. The Vaseline needs to cover all of the scales. You are suffocating the mite and its eggs. This treatment should be repeated each week for several weeks until the mites have died. Now let's get into the next parasite, bed bugs. Bed bugs may not readily come to mind with chickens, but chickens can suffer from them actually. 
Illinois. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention state that an adult female bed bug will lay about five eggs each day throughout her life. She can live for up to 12 months. That's a crazy amount of baby bed bugs. The most effective way to prevent bed bugs is to keep the hen house clean and to dust it with approved poultry dust periodically. You can read our guide on how to clean your coop. I'll link to that in the description and then see the heading run a tidy ship and that'll take you right there. And a quick note, make sure to wear gloves and any other protective equipment you require when dusting. Let's talk about the next parasite fleas. Most chicken fleas are brown in color, smallish, but large enough to be seen among the feathers. The worst infestations are usually seen during the hotter months, so extra vigilance is needed throughout the summer. There are two similar types of fleas. The European chick flea is the most common flea present in a lot of the US. Its cousin, the Western chick flea, also the black hen flea, is mainly limited to the Pacific Northwest and Canada. The Western flea prefers to live amongst the chicken droppings rather than on the bird. To treat either type of flea, you need to dust all your birds with approved poultry dust or diatomaceous earth. Even if, if some of your birds don't appear to be infected, if one chicken has fleas, they all do. When you dust them, pay special attention to their wings, saddle feathers, and mane tail. You need to remove all bedding, nesting in their coop, and clean and dust. Pay special attention to corners, crevices, and roosts. In 14 days, you need to repeat the dusting and clean out the coop again. After the second clean, you should be clean of fleas. This is currently a good deal of controversy over the use of diatomaceous earth. Some people say it's not healthy for the birds or the environment, so use at your own risk. The next type of flea I'm going to talk about is stick tight fleas. Stick tight fleas deserve a category because they require a unique cure. Once they have infected the chicken, they are very difficult to get rid of. They congregate around the eyes, combs, and wattles, so they're easy to see. The best way to remove them is with tweezers. Once you've pulled the flea out, coat the area with a layer of Vaseline. The hen house bedding needs to be removed as well, and then cleaning thoroughly with approved dust. Repeat this step in another 14 days, and make sure to pay special attention to corners and crevices and roosts in the chicken coop. Now, just a quick note, when dusting chickens' heads, use a small toothbrush to apply the dust. The respiratory system of a bird is sensitive to dust, and problems can result if they intake too much dust. All right, now let's get into the next group here, flies and mosquitoes. Black flies, mosquitoes, and biting gnats are also known as midges and punkies. They are extremely irritating to chickens and, you know, all of us. They can most commonly be found around areas of stagnant water and wetlands. To treat them, make sure you move any stagnant water sources nearby. If you still find your chickens affected, then use an approved pesticide such as mosquito dunk. Just a quick caveat here. Do not put mosquito dunks in the chicken's water. If you don't want to use a pesticide, you can use a natural prevention such as apple cider vinegar or garlic cloves. Just place this in the water and this is usually enough to deter these flies from arresting there. If you have a very dense population of mosquitoes, you should probably vaccinate birds against avian pox. Now let's get into the next type of parasite, blowflies. Blowflies, also known as filth flies, don't bite, but they can be very irritating and transmit tapeworms to your chickens. If a hen's vent area is particularly dirty or unkept, a fly may well lay eggs into the matting. When the maggots hatch out, they will eat the flesh underneath and burrow down. This is known as fly strike. Depending on the severity of the infestation, it can kill a chicken. Treatment can be done at home in most cases, but in severe infestations, a veterinarian should be consulted. Treatment consists of bathing the area in warm water. Standing the chicken in a bowl seems to work well. The infected area needs to be irrigated initially with hydrogen peroxide. This will encourage the maggots to leave the area. Follow the initial flushing. Irrigate several times with warm saline. All maggots must be removed with tweezers. Then you need to dry the area. A blow dryer will work just fine and spray the area with veterison wound spray. Once you first notice the infection, this routine needs to be done twice daily. Then after the first two days, stop using hydrogen peroxide as it prevents skin regeneration. Continue the outlined routine until the 
infestation has cleared up. Now let's get into the next group here, botfly and screw flies. Now these two insects are true parasites. Their eggs are laid on the skin of the chicken and the larva will burrow down into their tissue where they mature. When they are mature, they exit the tissue and drop to the ground where they pupate and turn into a botfly. The screw fly was once endemic to the US, Mexico, and several South American countries. Fortunately, since 1982, it has effectively been eradicated from the US. As with blowflies, cleanliness in the coop and frequent health checks goes a long way to prevent your hens from getting infected. The next parasite is lice. Lice are one of the most common chicken parasites. Chickens can be infested with severe kinds of lice, the most common in the US being head louse, a body louse, a shaft louse, and wing louse. The most common way chickens catch lice is through wild birds, adding new birds to an existing flock without quarantine or from contaminated clothing or equipment. A female lows can lay between 50 and 300 eggs in her short three week lifespan. So you must treat your chickens as soon as you spot any lice. To treat your chickens, you just need to use poultry dust. Again, like with fleas, make sure to focus on the wings, saddle feathers, and main tail area. In 14 days, repeat the dusting and then check again 14 days after that. You should find after the second check that all the lice are gone. If they aren't, dust them again and wait another 14 days. Quick note, before you run and jump screaming into the shower, lice are species specific. You cannot get chicken lice. They might jump on you, even bite you, but they won't set up shop on you. Now let's get into the last parasite and be sure to stay till the end here because I'm gonna also talk about preventative measures. All right, so ticks. The good news for us who live in the frigid north is we are unlikely to come across foul ticks. Foul ticks or blue bugs live primarily in the warmer states like Arizona and California. As with mites, birds will be reluctant to roost at night since the ticks will bite and in worst case, they can cause paralysis by secreting a neurotoxin into the chicken's blood. Treatment is similar to mites, dusting and removal of ticks with tweezers. If after treatment, the bird shows any sign of illness, a veterinarian should be contacted. All right, now let's get into preventative measures. As with all things, opinions and treatments vary. I have outlined simple remedies that are easily available to most people. If you're uncertain, please make sure to contact your veterinarian. I'm sure that by now you are realizing that cleanliness in the coop, along with frequent health checks, is the best thing to keep many of these critters at bay. Also, many of these insects can be deterred from nest boxes and coops by the use of certain herbs. For example, mint, lavender, and rosemary. They will also keep the coop smelling a little sweeter. However, one of the best ways to keep these parasites away from your chickens is to let your chickens take regular dust baths. That's right, chicken dust baths. The best way to make a chicken dust bath is out of a kiddie pool. Strange, I know, but if it's going to be placed outside of the mercy of the weather, you will need to make a few cuts with a box cutter or similar on the bottom of the entire length of the pool to release rainwater. A mixture of wood ash and peat moss, about half and half, is what I use in my chicken spa. Filter the larger chunks out and use the finer wood ash. Make sure you fill up the kiddie pool up to two to three inches from the top, and there you have it. Now, that was easy, wasn't it? The birds get enthusiastic in their spa, tossing the contents near and far. I top it off as frequently as needed. If you found this video helpful, be sure to be on the lookout for part two, as I will be doing that here soon. That's gonna do it for us here at the Happy Chicken Coop. Thanks for listening. If you find our content interesting, if you learned something new, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel with that. I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.